Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back. Now my name is Paul Apps and this is my wildlife art channel and today I wanted to share with you an oil painting of two hyena that I did just before Christmas so let's roll that intro and let's see what happened. Hi everyone and a warm welcome back. Now as I said just now, it is a painting in oils of two hyena. Moreover, it was a commission that I received from a client just before Christmas that they wanted to have in time to gift as a Christmas present to their partner. And so obviously I couldn't talk to you about it beforehand. I couldn't say anything about it in case I let the cat out of the bag. And when the client let me know how well the painting was received and the the, the final recipient was over the moon with the result and the painting. So that's all fantastic. Now, I primarily wanted to share this video with my Patreons because they get the fully narrated versions of all my films. And this one being so long, I had to cut it down into bite-sized chunks so that no one section was more than half an hour. So in 17 sections, they've got the whole lot. So people can look at as much or as little as they want to at any given time. But I also wanted to share this video with you guys. And um, I couldn't do eight and a half hours of footage for you. Uh, it would be crazy. So what I decided to do was to really severely edit it. And I wanted to edit it into two little films. So this film is part one and it will take you through the initial process from the drawing part onwards to so far down the road with the painting and then in the second part we'll come back and we'll do all that fine detail and we'll bring it to a closure but that's not for this video this video will take you through about 20 minutes of the painting so i've got to say it is severely edited down and I didn't know any other way to do it, but I hope, and I really do hope, that you guys get enough from it to enjoy primarily, and also to take away some things from it that you can use in your own artistic endeavors moving forward. So that's the plan. I hope you enjoy it, and I catch each and every one of you at the end of this first section of the uh, video. Catch you soon. Hi guys and a warm welcome to this little demonstration. Now it's two hyena in a water hole that was situated in Namibia a few years ago and it's an oil painting and it's actually a client commission. So I wanted to just bring you along for the ride and show you a little insight as to how I go about doing this. Now the drawings were done and they've been transferred to the board so I'm ready to get going and get on with this one and I'm just going to paint and have a bit of fun. Hopefully you'll enjoy the process and get something from it. Now, all I'm going to be doing to start with is I'm using a round ivory brush from um, Rosemary and Company. You know that I use a lot of her brushes. I also want to come in with a very thin um, color based on sort of the ground at the background. Now this water hole is quite a deep one and as such, uh, there was, you know, steep banks coming out of the water, sort of shallow a bit there, but then it suddenly really ramped up. You can just see when I put the photograph up how the ridge suddenly starts going upward. But So this is all part of the blocking and I'm using mid-tones of the colours for the background and I'm going to be using a very similar mid-tone for the blues before we finish blocking out. At this stage is just losing that whiteboard. Come in here and create the shadow under the tummy of this animal and I'm just blocking in. I really am not trying to paint this to a finish at any point at this stage. I am merely coming in and I'm setting up the uh, image for the future. Now you can see that a lot of my drawing I'm just blanking out. Um, it served its purpose from that point of view add a little bit more blue to this side because we're coming up into 
a much lighter part but in shadow on the animal okay so as i did with the background and the foreground i'm using colors that i think are appropriate to start blocking out both of these hyena and bring that down to there now in terms of the colors between here and here uh, it's way off. What I might just do is take a piece of kitchen towel and it would be a good idea while we've still got wet paint as such. And I'm just going to take off some material from here and take that off there. Okay so what I'm doing now is lifting out uh, some of the paint with paper towel and making suggestive marks that might be interesting later on down the road. Remember to keep turning and folding over the paper towel for a new piece. Just to come into this area here because it's very very strong in terms of a contrast between that and the water. So that's pretty much where the area ends to a little shape of dark around there to the water's edge. As I was just doing on the first hyena, I'm now doing to the second one. I'm adding some very generic lights, dark statements. Now, these are so basic. They are literally establishing shapes, contours of the head, marks that are important like spots, muzzle, ears, things like that. But everything is being set up that I can then add lights and darks and more detail further down the road in this painting process. But this is just literally the start and the process will continue. Take that away from that side. Now the water's got a little bit contaminated. It's not as blue or powerful as it was, but I quite like what I've done because I've used some of the cobalt teal in there and it really is popping away. That sort of green and the reddy oranges are working quite nicely. I think this is just a little bit too much but we're going to come and change some of that anyway as I start to refine. What I want to do now is start to look at the area behind these uh, two creatures and start to put in what I consider to be a little bit more um, appropriate color values to the ground behind. Now I'm going to be using more opaque color because I don't really want the surface of the board to totally show through. But I would like to have that um, opacity that I feel it would need. So I'm going to be working in an awful lot of small tap motions like this using this small zero long flat brush. Okay, so what I'm doing now is adding the next layer of color to the background. And I'm using a lighter value than I did earlier just to suggest extra marks. And I'm also being influenced by some of the areas that I lifted out with the paper towel previously. And each of those marks are suggesting little bits of dirt, little bits of ground and contour in the background. So it was very, very useful to do that. And now I'm starting to blend some of that and soften it. But just be aware, don't overdo it. Don't go too mad. The more you do is just in there. You see, I went a little bit too heavy and I started blending those colors too much. And so they become less important and almost why did I bother sort of pulling them in the first place because they're almost lost within each other. That fan brush is a useful friend, but I don't use it very often to blend and it's easily overdone. But what I'm going to do now is start going in with some dark marks with a smaller brush just to add some detail back into those lights. I'll make it a little bit cooler than the one that I've just put in there. So again, I'm just going back to the um, color here is slightly warmer let's just come down here and suggest the light on the top and then coming down into the face of the um, ridge as it were little fissures coming down when you're painting you're making a whole series of decisions sometimes they're good ones sometimes they're bad ones you move forwards you move backwards you add a little you subtract a little but every time you place a color down you are slowly refining your ideas and that's exactly what i'm doing here in the background i'm forming or terraforming the canvas in a way i'm simply adding lights and darks in a way that start to create a form a physical form that is the background. I do finish today. I may come back to this in a short while 
what I would like to do is just pump up some of the volume on the lights of these animals. Now, it's a little premature, I've got to say, but I want to come in with some of that oxide of yellow. I'm going to put to that a little bit of cadmium yellow. Now, this is the first of the concentrated pure pigments of color that I'm putting in. I just want to bring up a little bit more light. Okay, so now, as I did with the background, I start making the same sorts of decisions for the hyena. I'm looking at different color values, lights and darks, warms and cools, in an effort to try and create further contrast and detail within them without going too far. We're not trying to make a finished picture. I'm also using the same principles here with the warm dark colors in the reflected surface of the water and adding a bit more detail into the water surface. All of this is to continue on to the next stage and more detail. Okay, so it is the next afternoon and this has had probably the better part of uh, 18 hours or so to dry off a little bit. And because I was using um, a liquid, which is just a paint medium, but it is a fast drying agent. So it really does help your um, painting dry overnight. And although this isn't firmly dry, I mean, one piece of uh, material on here, I could wipe it back a little bit, but essentially it's dry enough to get honing in on some of the details here and start getting into some information in the heads, which is what I want to do now. I want to refine the animals more, before I really go back into doing any more to the background. Okay, so one of the biggest key areas that I discuss with students, not only with you guys here on my tutorials on YouTube, but also in my Patreon, and also the uh, students that I teach each week in my gallery. And the thing is that the biggest advance that you make so quickly, the biggest stride forward is the blocking stage right at the very beginning of the work that you're doing. The thing is that that's when you're making big statements with color, very generic color, often mid-tone colors, that you're simply making statements that broadly convey the painting, but get rid of any whiteboard that you no longer wish to see. The thing is then once you've done that, you can move forward more detail more layers, more detail, and so that repeats until you get to the end of your painting. The thing is that the whole process often slows down to a mere crawl. More decisions, less brush strokes, but those brush strokes are better defined, they're more important, the decision-making process to complete them has been a lot more considered than a simple blocking stage. So the whole of this process simply will slow down but hopefully at the end of it you'll have a painting that you'll be proud of at least that's what i'm aiming for with this particular one just taking out this last piece of white here into the cheek here there's not a lot of information to be seen in the side of the muzzle here but i do want to put in the suggestion of the shape of the mouth here little bit there coming around into shade it's not all bright and I can do that and I think that works quite nicely now I have come quite a long way with developing this head getting rid of any white board that remains and adding a little bit of detail and I'm going to start doing that now down the body adding some of the spots that are needed and some of the lights and darks that also will be required to give an add contrast I'm looking at some of these dark shapes and the blues and the reds. Now I'm actually going to come away from umber and I'm going to warm my blues up to a very dark grungy purple by adding in some English light red. It's a super dark, super rich dark and you can achieve very similar effects. If you haven't got English light red, you can put in um, some burnt sienna, very, very similar thing to do now there's a nice dark coming through there you know for as long as i can ever remember my work has always relied upon good use of complementary color both with each other and also sitting beside each other and adding the lights and the darks to that further enhances them i feel that you can't really have a red 
without a blue somewhere nearby and vice versa. Always worth considering when you're working on anything. All right, so now then, do I carry on with that? I think I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna come across, I'm gonna look at this one. I wanna bring the head up of this one as equal to the other one as I possibly, possibly can. Okay, so I've got a little bit more work to do, I think, with the eyes. They're not quite deep enough here. Okay, now for the second hyena, I'm repeating the steps that I did on the first one, getting rid of any remaining white board, but also adding and refining detail. Okay, I think what will help it is to bring a little bit more dark into this part here of the nose. It's a little bit too light, not that dark, but just a gentle colouring on this area just to give a sense of roundness to that side of the muzzle. Okay, so the brush marks are different and of course the animal is the second hyena. But the processes and the questions that I asked myself are exactly the same for this one as they were indeed for the other one. I am still looking at all the forms, all the detail that are in the photograph reference and asking myself the whole series of questions. Is it light? Is it dark? Is it warm or is it cool? So once all those questions have been answered, then as long as I take the same level of care as I did with the first one, the two will move forward smoothly together and arrive at a satisfactory completion. I'm still a long way from it, but we're well on our way. It's got a bit of cool color in here as well. I'm just gonna bring that in because I don't want to leave it until I come back because I may want to work in it. But I think that's just nice, a cool color on some of these um, sort of folds in the skin. I've done pretty much everything I want to do to this. There may be a few lights and darks to add in at some point towards the end of this. But here I've got a lot of work to do now to start putting the detail in. We've pretty much sorted out the eyes and the head and all of those features, but there's still a lot more work to go. So I'm gonna crack on and I'm gonna talk on the way. So, okay, so I'm using a fine brush. I'm using a zero, or sorry, a number one rosemary pointed round, which has got a nice shape to it. So I'm going to start working with that. Right, so another week has gone by and the painting has been allowed to dry off thoroughly and it's certainly ready for a new layer to be added. Now this layer obviously means a lot more detail. I've dropped my brush size to a small rigger and the painting and the subjects on it are not that large so it really does help to have the small brush to hand. And then I've got to say that I am a big fan of riggers and when it comes to adding detail, especially fur, hair, and things like that. But that's what I'm doing. I'm going over the whole of this painting again, in a sense, but I'm refining everything that's been done so far. I'm adding key lights into certain areas, cools into others, warm areas where needed, and darker marks where I've missed them or indeed lost them. But all of this is moving forward and this process will be continually repeated until the end. Subtle light in here, not too much, it's not too dense, not too strong. Just want to give that sense of that line coming through here and the edge of. Now here I'm going to come in with some more cobalt blue, a little bit of red and a little bit of umber, just to mix down my dark. A little bit of that lovely cab red in there. When working on something that requires a lot of attention, a lot of detail, it is easy to get a little complacent, a little bored or a little tired and start making shortcuts. And that's when you're going to hit problems. So best to walk away, have a cup of tea, take your time, come back to it a little more refreshed before you carry on. Always the best plan of action. I don't want to overdo it and highlights are always or should always be used quite sparingly. They are after all called highlights so you know you just don't want them to be too much. Okay everybody that is the end of the first part of this two-part tutorial on two hyena 
from Etosha. Now, I do hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the painting process. I really also hope that it wasn't so edited down that the messages were lost. I tried very, very hard to make the points that I wanted to make and leave enough there for you not only to enjoy, but to take something from it to move on with in your own paintings. And that's the whole idea of a tutorial after all. So I hope I managed to do that. And as regards part two, well, it is already being edited down and I really hope, I don't wanna make promises when it's coming out, but I do really hope that it won't be long, far behind this one, so that you can enjoy it. Now, I will also make some um, uh, reference material ready for you to download and use over on my Patreon. You don't need to be a patron to use it, just pop on over there. It's not this particular subject matter, but it is a hyena and the liner and the color reference are there ready for you to freely download and have a go at it and use all the reference that I've provided in this film and also in part two when it comes. So look out for that, pop on over there. And may I just say that while you're there, why not check it out? Why not check out the Patreon? The whole of my back catalog with over 200 of videos is there to enjoy and get something from. And it only costs you $10 a month. And there is no sort of set time. You can come in, you can come out, you can do whatever you like really, as long as you enjoy yourself. And as long as you find content that you can use and learn from. So that's the whole idea. And all this video, the full length, eight and a half hours in 17 parts is already there and there will be more and more uh, videos added as the time moves forward so yeah check it out and if you want to get involved as my latest patron i'd love to welcome you on board as such so what else do i just want to say well before i do finish this video and i know i am rambling a little bit but i would like to say that if you enjoy my content here and all my previous videos. And if you're not a subscriber already, then please, please, please consider subscribing because it's with not without, um, I've noticed that when I look at the stats that only about half of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. Now, the thing is that without the interaction of the people who watch, without people commenting, sharing, um, liking, and also subscribing, clicking the bell icon and the notification tab. All of these things are recognized by YouTube as pointers that help them promote a channel to a wider audience. And I need or would love to grow my channel, not because of any other reason than reaching much more, many more people around the world who, like you guys, want to learn to paint, want to get something from these videos, and if they don't know I exist, then then there's very little point. So hopefully you'll get on board with that and maybe you'll give me your subscription if indeed you feel I've earned it. And that would be awesome. And I would, yeah, I would welcome you on as a subscriber too. So with all that said and done, I'm gonna leave you alone now. You've listened to me long enough and I'm gonna get on and get prepared, not only with part two of this, but also the next, uh, presentation that I want to make to you in due course. So I'm going to think about that and get on with that now. So I'm going to uh, wish each and every one of you every happiness, stay painting, enjoy yourself, stay safe wherever you are, but keep those brushes moving and have fun doing it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.